Hello, everybody. Welcome to Astrologic Astrology, the astrology of I am. I'm your host, Lorenzo Sanford, and this is Venus Fridays when love speaks. Today, our guest is a very, very, very special person. She's the star of stage and screen. She's a young rising jazz lion. She's taking the charge and bringing new culture and new artistic creativity to the world. And she's a good friend. She's none other than Tia Fuller. And we are in a conversation about all things love and creativity. And we don't wanna waste any time. So I'm going to share with you the interview with Tia that I conducted by Zoom. And then I'll see you on the other side. Tia. Fuller, my God, it's so good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you, love. Look, I love you. I absolutely love you. <laughs> look at you. You oh, look so amazing. Thank you. I'm trying. You do too. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to keep up with you because you've you always better, been a great role model. Come on now. You better you better stop telling <laughs> those stories and start telling the truth now. <laughs> Look at that color. Look at that color. That's my favorite color behind you. Oh, that's an eggplant. That's my favorite color. Are you serious? This whole room is eggplant. I, I wanted to actually paint my whole house this color. My sister was like, no. <laughs> no, I just did one room. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you're killing it with the blue and the gold and uh -huh. the beautiful. Oh my God. Look at Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. So, you know, this is Venus Fridays. Yes. Venus Fridays is our weekly conversation about love. And it's also about artistry and about creativity and about everything that it takes to be a human in, in this form where we touch people's lives. And you do that. And I, I'm happy to be able to say I've known you for such a long time. And can I just tell everybody that you've always been a star. You are, you are just a star right now because of all the, the recent things that are happening, which everybody's aware of, but I want you to speak about too. But since I met you so many moons ago, you had this dedication to your craft that said, I believe in myself and I believe that what I'm doing is worthy and mm. it's it's always been inspiring to me. I just want to say that up front. You've always mm. been an inspiration to me. No, oh, no. You know, thank you, Lo. And you, um, well, we met when I was 18. What? I was 18. Two and... years ago? Yeah, exactly. I was about to say, I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like, okay, five. <laughs> but, but back then, um, it was... I was really green, just coming from Colorado, of course. And and then when I met you, I remember I was like, who is this brother? Because you were helping out the Spelma Jazz Ensemble. And it, it, to me, like your presence, it constantly opened my eyes to, to what was possible and to a certain elevated perspective, like within music. And I remember in particular, I was late for a rehearsal. <laughs> you remember that? I was no. late and you were like, you didn't say baby girl at the time, but you were like, Tia, this is unacceptable. And you breathed <laughs> into me, at least at the time, that's what it felt like. And I felt like I disappointed you. And that was the last time that I had been late for a rehearsal. Lord, you were like, you can't do this. But that was a great lesson for me. So just thank you for always holding me accountable and always, you know, you've always been a source of inspiration and also support. Thank you so much for, support. thank you for saying that, but I, I I have to honestly say you practiced every day for hours and hours and hours. So there is no, absolutely no coincidence about where you are today. And so I, you know, I just have to give you that honor and I want our audience to know that it's not just by chance that you are able to create this whole life of creativity, this whole life of expressing yourself from your heart. And I have to say this too, I, I know we don't, you don't wanna talk about the past too much, but when you decided to, to go on your own, I never forget the moment that you told me, you said, playing in stadiums is nice, 
and and being on the stage with a world famous entertainer is nice. Yeah. But I have stuff that I want to do. Yeah. Who yeah. does that, Tia? <laughs> Who's who says that but a pioneer? And you are and you are being your Aries. You didn't realize it then, but you're being what an Aries woman or Aries person is. Somebody who is a leader and doesn't look back to see who's following, who's coming after me, because you're so clear about you have something that you want to do. Wow. I no, I appreciate that. But it all started, to me, this crystallized vision and this big picture started when I met you. Like around that time, freshman year, I knew that I wanted to move to New York. I knew that I wanted to pursue my own career, to do certain things. And um, even though I had other opportunities like that gig with Queen B, um, there was still, I was extremely intentional about my big picture that I had really set. And then I... I might have kind of rearranged along the way, but the, the big components didn't shift. And um, yeah, I'm really thankful. I'm just thankful for that because that gig actually afforded me the opportunity to refine a lot of my big picture. Nice. Playing with Beyonce and seeing how she functioned on stage and you know how she communicated with her band members and her crew and a businesswoman created a set list, all of it did her makeup, you know, posed in, in a movie, or not in movies, but also in photo shoots. All of that has really contributed to my individual big picture, which I'm really thankful. So, so yeah, uh, nothing, it was nothing by coincidence. It was all by design, God's design, and I'm just thankful. That's so gracious of you to put it like that, but okay. <laughs> no, it's true. So, so talk to us about the love of self that it takes to be an artist, especially a jazz artist, mm -hmm. in a world where, quite frankly, jazz is not always appreciated as much as other musics, mm -hmm. even though it is the foundation of so much of American music. Mm -hmm. What kind of self-love does it take? Ooh. I know this is a lot to, to put on you because you may be just following your heart, but I can see it. It's very clear that it's a self-love yeah. to, dedica to dedicate yourself to something that has such significance and such meaning as a cultural expression, mm -hmm. but also as a point of self-expression. What does it mean? What does it feel like to go after that when, as I say, nobody's going after that or, you know, very few people are looking at that form of expression? Yeah, yeah. You know, that self-love bit is key, but of course we have to look at the shoulders that we're standing upon to, to see self. And when I look at self, I remember and reflect back on my mother and my father, but my mother in particular having conversations with me saying, Tia, you're a black woman. You just can't do, you just can't rise to the occasion. You have to supersede what your peers and everybody else. You have to be better than, and there was a term that she used, you have to go above and beyond the call of duty always. And that to me is so imprinted in my being, going above and beyond call of duty, that then when I got to you know the bandstand and my dad would teach me lessons of Tia, play. He'd be yelling at me on stage like, Tia, play, play, play. And then later on we would talk and he said, yeah, the reason why I was, I was yelling at you is because I didn't want you to be scared. There, I knew that you were going to be the only woman and one of the only black women there. And I didn't want you to be scared. So all of these things then translated into being at Spelman and seeing black excellence. So it's become a part of a fabric, the fabric of my being. So when I do reflect upon self, it's deeply ingrained from those who have come before and poured into me, you know, wow. so it's not self. It's actually standing on the shoulders and of those who have come before and really honoring what they had poured into me. Yes. And that's, that's where I really draw from my, um, my inspiration and being able to withstand certain situations that have been and still are sometimes very uncomfortable. Is because yes. there's relevance and there's intention and there's conviction, not for me, but it's for those who have come before standing on the shoulders and then those who are coming after. Yes. I think yes. That gives me motivation. It's like, I got to be here. It's not for me. I have to speak up 
about this guy saying the sexist remark. Not for me, because when I was 18, I didn't, I would kind of, you know, tuck away. But now I'm like, I got to speak up and bring voice to this for those who are coming after. Absolutely. You know? And can, can I, what I hear you saying also is that there's a, a form of surrender that's a part of that, because you have to sort of surrender to this higher calling because you are actually a leader and you're showing how to be someone who, as you say, takes on the mantle of leadership from the guidance of people who came before. Mm -hmm. But let's not play around with this. You are... Uh, an outstanding artist, you're an outstanding musician, and you're dealing with some very profound elements when you, whenever you stand on that stage. Mm -hmm. So there is a surrender, when you say to, to, to what that, all of that cultural energy is for you? Definitely, definitely. Um, two things, or two points I want to bring up regarding surrendering. surrendering. And that term, of course, is something that we hear in Christian, but in spirituality and different manifestations of it, of how do we surrender? How do we let go of the things that we think or that we think that we know to just really let God take over? And I remember I was talking with one of my good friends, ZJ Strickland, who's a great drummer. And he was showing me, he was kind of giving me some drum lessons and showing me this bossa nova beat. And I remember him specifically saying, Tia, you have to surrender to the beat. I was like, wow, what, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? So that was one of the first occurrences that I felt it in, in the scope of music. But also, um, and this is a term that I, I'm, I'm living, or I'm trying to live more, but I'm seeing the importance of it. And it's the level of porosity, like being porous as a leader, even though we're in a space of facilitating information and you know music and setting the expectation, hopefully, but also, it's, to me, it's our obligation as a leader to be porous and to really bring in the information from those that you trust, your bandmates around you, so that, so that they can lead you. Because a good leader is going to listen yes. and it's going to be led. Yes. And, and, I mean, Beyonce showed that, Esperanza showed that, Terry Lynn, you know, all of these extraordinary leaders that I've gotten a chance to work with, I'm seeing that there's a level of elasticity and porosity that's been really, really beautiful. That's so nice to hear. I'm, I'm just, this is inspiring. My mind is like going all over the place. There's so much I want to ask you about. <laughs> and and um, since you mentioned all these great female artists who are killing it now, let's talk a little bit more about what that means to be in a field that is largely patriarchal, but now is being open and receptive to what women like yourself are doing. Let's talk about what it means to be a black woman achieving the things that you're achieving. You're Grammy nominated. You were nominated alongside Wayne Shorter. Ooh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that just sent chills down my back. <laughs> Whoa. And, and, and to be fair, um, you know, we know we, we just recently lost Chick Korea and you know, Wayne is advancing in age. And so there's a lot of changing of the guard that's imminent. And yeah. you, you seem to be one of the people who is on the vanguard, taking the new, you know, taking the, the leadership from those, from those masters. How does, what does that tell us about what that feels like? Uh, you know what's crazy is I was just speaking with Mimi Jones, our sister Mimi Jones last great basis, night. Great basis. Yes, yes. And um, we were reflecting upon Chick Corea and uh, had a conversation, you know, with Ralph Peterson, great drummer. Who's, great drummer. Yeah, who's been dealing with cancer for a long time and he's a warrior, um, but not able to receive treatments anymore. And just looking at all of these legends uh, who are moving on. And um, she was saying, she was like, Tia, like, we've been talking about this as far as like taking the torch, but it's real now. It's real. Like, we have to be unapologetic in taking this torch and, and doing what it takes, not only as musicians, but also as black women and not being apologetic about or being unapologetic about it. Yes. In a sense of, yeah, let's bring this cultural aspect of looking at how black women functioned in creating the society 
um, nurturing, you know, slave masters' children alongside of our own children. And what we've done that's really a part of our DNA from a nurturing standpoint and the strength. But also, and this is something else that I've been talking about with a lot of my sisters, is that redefining what a, a strong black woman looks like. Meaning that it doesn't have to amount to um, us doing so much that we're completely depleted. Lord have mercy. That we're giving so much of self that we have no time to give to give to ourselves. Yes. And um, really redefining that so that we can sustain, you know, our livelihood. We can live a fuller life instead of always being on the um, on the tail end of our life because we've given and poured in to so many people, our family, our friends, our children, our husbands, you know, and we're, we're left having strokes, having heart attacks, fibroids. I have so many black women who are dealing with fibroids. And that's, to me, that's nothing other. There's a great book called The Anatomy of the Spirit that Terry Lynn hit me to. And Caroline, how everything- Caroline, Caroline Miss, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. And how everything equated to our medical being or our physical wealth and wellness is um, equated to what's going on spiritually. And all of these cancers and strokes it's all stress, some form of, you know, a modality of, of stress that's Absolutely. showing up. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think it's important. Um, so I'm actually creating this uh, round table. It's a Black Girls Rock round table that's going to primarily func function in, um, in um, Berkeley, but I think I'm going to make it more expansive and try to connect it to other students and institutions so that we can have these conversations because a lot of women out here are... A black woman, especially out here in this white patriarchal society, we're still trying to figure out how to navigate and how to redefine and, you know, function and still show up for our families, but also for ourselves. Absolutely. And what that Absolutely. feels like in a healthy way. Absolutely. And you mentioned Berkeley. Our, our viewers should know you're a scholar as well. You're not just a musician. Uh -huh. You're an artist, <laughs> musician, scholar, world-class beauty, no. all of it. And... You're a a um, a top professor at the Berkeley School of Music in Boston, so that's another feather in your hat. And all of that comes to to make who you are in your public life, and we appreciate all of that. But let's switch gears a little bit and talk about what it takes to be a woman in full, managing all of that. We're we're always um, wanting to bring the astrological element in. And you have Venus in Pisces. Okay. And we're celebrating Venus in Pisces this month because Venus is returning to Pisces. And it's the time when we start to explore these issues of spirituality, creativity, mm -hmm. surrender, all the things that we're talking about. But mm -hmm. specifically as it relates to love, how do you balance all of that with uh, all of the things that you're dealing with with trying to be a woman who experiences love in the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and intimate love what is that like that's you know <laughs> love, and you told me to be transparent tell the truth baby this shit is hard i mean it's hard because what's happening is there's an archetype of what a woman is supposed to be like and unfortunately it doesn't look like us and then when we show up as a black woman who is strong also you know, professional, um, uh, a touring musician, a writer, a composer, an educator, like all of these things you're, you're tapped into. Whereas a lot of the socialization and the culture of this world, um, a woman is supposed to be more so myoptic or have just, okay, of course you're gonna nurture the children, you're gonna show up for the family, uh, you, you're, you may have a job, um, but it's okay to be a house mom. And then you may have another thing happening. It, so maybe four different facets of their life. Whereas I look at my life and I'm like, man, I feel like I have about eight to 10 different jobs that I'm constantly managing. And then putting um, a relationship and love on top of that is, um, I mean, to me, it's a beautiful thing. I love love and I love being in love. But to find somebody who understands the totality of your being and as to who you have or what you have to offer, but also what you have to learn from there, 
from them in light of what it may appear to look like um, in the world. It's a it's a constant balancing act. And um, I would say for me, like now, because I just got out of a relationship, and to be perfectly honest. Whoa, and, wait a minute. What? You're available? Oh, Lord. Yes, I'm available. <laughs> all right. All right, brothers. All right, brothers. She's available. You better jump on it because it won't be long. No. <laughs> no. You won't be available saying. long. <laughs> no, that's so funny. I wasn't even saying that to, to me. There, there was a song when you were uh, very young, before you were born, by this group called the, Dr the Dramatics out of Detroit, Michigan. They were like the Temptations, but they were a little bit after. And they had a song that I want to just bring to mind right now for, okay. for uh, whoever that person was who let you go. The song is called Give a Toast to the Fool Who Let You Go. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. And what I was saying is that coming out of that relationship, even though it was painful, and it still kind of is, but um, in my healing, I'm reflecting and I'm seeing that there are some non-negotiables. So one of them, of course, he has to be a spiritual brother. He has to love his family. But then also, um, he has to be a great communicator. He has to have, um, preferably, a. Um, he has to have a career and not a job. Something that he's passionate about, not just something that he just does out of, I call it the dial and dad syndrome of just like, I'm waking up to, you know, like a robotic type thing. And then also being goal oriented. And then in general, just really honor big picture thinking. And it's not like he has to be a big executive or make a whole lot of money, but just honor the idea of like seeking information um, and learning new things so that we can share it with each other, you know, on a high level of communication and um, connectivity, spiritual connectivity. and But all of those things, there's this book called The Ways of a Warrior that Esperanza Spalding hit me too. And it talks about the importance of setting your boundaries. Absolutely. What are your boundaries? And these non-negotiables are boundaries to help direct you in the path of your true love, what it is that you you desire for, for self, you know? And essentially self-leading back to how you were raised, what you're used to, the things that you desire and being honest with those things. And there's also a, a component, I think, of holding that space inside of yourself deeply enough so that you begin to resonate to it all the time. And then you be, you're able to manifest it outwardly. If you believe it and you hold it inside of you, it can't help but manifest outside of you in the That's world. That's right. That's right. And if you, I think another thing I read somewhere, but something I'm working on is the things that you, so T.D. Jakes, great quote, the things that you move toward moves toward you. Absolutely. Another manifestation of that is basically whatever you are working on, self, what parts of self, if you're reading, if you, you know, if you're practicing spirituality, those are the things that, that will be drawn to you. Absolutely. I have a, a quote that I give my clients all the time. The things I seek are seeking me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we shall come together. I love it. We shall. Not Ooh, we I love it. You proclaim it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'm going to start saying that. And we shall. <laughs> and we shall. Through. No doubt we'll about it. it and, and so how is it working out in terms of, I know you, you said you just ended a relationship, but do you still have hope that you'll be able to attract that sort of 20th century man, 21st century man? I'm sorry. Do you, I, do you think that because it, it's obviously men are needing to grow too and understand that the world is changing, their women are changing. Yes. We have to be open to what that is. Mm -hmm. Can you offer anything to, to the brothers, to the men who, who see you, but maybe aren't clear about how to, to work along with you to achieve this vision? Mm -hmm. What can you offer to the brothers that will give them a sense of, Oh, okay. It's not as threatening or it's not as challenging as I thought. I mean, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first off to the first point of what you were to your question. Um, I do, I am optimistic, but I think just over the past week, I've gotten to a point of, I don't want to say being thirsty because I don't think I was ever that thirsty, but getting to a point of like, you know what? I'm kind of numb, numbed and, um, 
and I'm a little, to be perfectly honest, I'm a little turned off. I'm not turned off by love, but I'm turned off with everything else that was negative, like trying to make concessions in a relationship, um, trying to work things out and, and giving so much and then in the end getting hurt. So that part, I'm like, you know what? I'm good right now because I really want to focus on self. Um, so that part I'm, I'm numb to. But to your second point, I think for young men out there and even older men, I think it's important that even though a woman may look a certain way or be you know, uh, perceived as a certain way, that at the end of the day, a woman just wants to be appreciated for who they are. Yes, indeed. And, and to be loved. And I know that sounds so cliche, but to be loved in a way that is accepting um, and and to be honored, you know, to be listened to um, and to not always have the fix it mentality of, oh, hey, I, you share something with your man and then your man's like, oh, coming up with certain ways to rectify. It's like, yeah, that's cool. But sometimes I just need a springboard. I just need to share with you. And, and I'd like to hear what you think, but not necessarily how can you resolve it? Yes. So to me, these are the microcosms of the relationship that really build the fabric of um, of, it, of its connectivity, you know, the, the connection between male or connection between two people. I don't even want to say male and female, not to speak in binary terms. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, sh and I'm sure there's going to be some great music that's going to come out of this experience, right? Woo! <laughs> yes. Yes, already. Yep. It's been definitely in the oven. And um, it's been rough, though. I mean, it's crazy because I, I thought with all of this space being home, I would be disciplined enough to kind of be here and emote and then be productive. But it hasn't been that at all. It's like been little snippets and I'm singing into my phone. I'm like, whatever. F <laughs> Let me go and do something else. Let me go play some long phone. Let me go a meal. You know, so it, <laughs> you know, but. But it's yeah. all, a, but it's all a part of it. Yeah. And it's going to, I, I know you and you're going to put all of these things that you've, that have been brewing and percolating and, and simmering inside of you. And it's going to come out into this beautiful, this beautiful stew, this beautiful expression of creativity, because that's who you are. Yeah. And so, yeah, no. Even low. I mean, no, that's I'm who you like, are. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't make anybody believe that you're anything less the way you're looking so fabulous and uh -oh. your energy is just so good. Thank, thank you, Lo. You know, if I may, I just want to share with the viewers that when I was a freshman, I remember you told me a couple of things. You said, always have something green at the beginning of the day. And then you said, always do at least 30 minutes of cardio at the gym. Wow. And at the time you were like, and I know you still eat really well, but you were like, you were vegan. And I had never really hung with anybody who was vegan. I didn't even know what it really was. Coming from Colorado, I'm like, man, nah, we eat meat and potatoes. And like, what is this vegan, pescatarian? Like all these new. <laughs> but all of that, you know, the health and wellness really plays a part of, you know, your spirit and your mental state. And I'll just never forget. So since then, only five years ago, when you shared yes, this with me. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but since then, it was, I've always gotten on the treadmill, I'm like, at least 30 minutes, at least. You don't have to tell us, we can see. Well, we, I don't know. We After ain't blind. We, <laughs> we ain't blind, we can see. It's all working for you, Tia, and, oh, and I just want to, I know uh, your your parents are, are, are processing some health things, and I just want to let you know we're all praying for you and your family. Thank you. And um, there's already tons of people who love you and support you, but you know you always have a supporter in me. I know I do. I'm so I always thankful. have my love and always have my support. And again, it's not just because of what you've achieved, it's because of who you are. I thank you for being who you are in the world because you, Tia, are a pioneer, you're a strong woman, and you are leading you're on the cutting edge of, of, 
everything that's right about our culture, about our people, about our creativity. And I just thank you for being here with us. Aww. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. So you almost brought <laughs> tears to my eyes. <laughs> oh. so, so let's keep um, this conversation going and let, let people know that we have to be about sharing information that moves us forward. That's right. That, amen to that. Thank you, Tia. Thank you, Lo. I love you. Tell Dorian I said hi. I will. Love you, too. Love you back. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was great. It was a joy to be able to interview someone who is so talented, so on the cutting edge of being a leader culturally, creatively, emotionally, spiritually, with all her insights. Thank you, Tia, again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being who you are in the world. And thank you for being a friend. And thank you for being with us today. And if you enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe, and please share. And if you need a reading, you know you can reach us at astrologicastrology.com. We're also on Instagram at Astrologic Astrology, and of course, YouTube. Thank you for sharing with us. And as always, we wish you love and peace. And we say goodbye with the Sanskrit word, namaste. The spirit in me recognizes and honors the spirit in you.